Joining me now is the National Manager of the IPA's Class Action Program, Colleen Harkin. Colleen, we've got more than 1,500 teaching positions vacant in Victoria, with some schools having to split classes or shut early because they can't find any educators to fill the spots. The Herald Sun reports 771 jobs were posted in the past week. Last year, you might remember, Dan Andrews' uh, government announced teaching degrees would be free, graduate teachers even being offered bonuses to subsidise uh, their start of their careers in government schools or help them move to regional areas. Why is none of this working? Well, Rita, the, that program that was announced last year actually doesn't start until this year. And it that takes probably four years. Part of it. Yeah, four <laughs> years for those students to get through the system. But the real question is will they ever be qualified to lead a classroom? Because our research shows that of that four years that they're about to spend at the university, only 10 weeks of it is dedicated to the teaching, learning the skills to teach reading, writing, uh, science, history. So they'll spend the only next. Only 10 weeks of Only it. 10 weeks out of their full four year university degree. So the priorities of the universities are really warped mm. and undermining their ability to become competent and happy teachers. So uh, that program, to be fair to them, will take a while for it to work through the system, but it still doesn't mean we're going to have capable and competent teachers at the end of the four years. So what are they spending their time on if uh, so much of it isn't on what you would expect them to be spending it on? What, what, what's the priority? Well, the priority is, uh, like the national curriculum, it's woke content. Oh. Um, you know, university courses that are called things like, is skin colour a pigment of your imagination, for <laughs> example? So the, the priorities in the, um, the university curriculum are as warped as the national curriculum. They're not prioritising the skill set that's required to do the job, which of course then means that the people who are coming out the other end are not skilled in the job they have to do to manage a classroom. Our classrooms are some of the worst in the world. We are 71st out of 80 in the OECD in, term, in terms of classroom discipline requirement. And if you've spent four years of your university degree learning how to be a global warrior mm. instead of how to be a great teacher, that's not going to be very satisfying at the end of the day. Absolutely. And if we're basically telling anyone who's got a, a conservative ideology, you're not welcome in this profession because you're going to just have to be indoctrinating kids relentlessly in leftist groupthink, that's a large chunk of the potential teacher pool that's gone. And we've also really not encouraging men to enter this profession. It seems to be dominated by women. And again, so you've got another 50% of the population gone. Yeah. That can't be helping with the teacher shortage. Well, statistically, that's clearly true. But the real issue is that teacher, teaching as a, a profession is not really sort of appealing to most people at the moment because of the conditions of the curriculum, of having to, the cross-curriculum priorities of prioritising Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders' history and cultures and sustainability ahead of actually the skill set that the children require. To the way they inject that into every subject from music to maths is yeah. astonishing. Sustainability and uh, what they call First Nations Correct, yeah. So that, that, that's objectives. a stated priority in the national curriculum. So it doesn't state uh, our priorities to make sure that kids can read and write to become critical thinkers in their own right. It actually states the priority that uh, sustainability in Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders is what they should be learning at every opportunity. And I do also worry about the state of our universities because the hostile environment that's been fostered there, the far-left activism that is scaring off some Jewish students, uh, some of them are deferring, uh, declining to attend classes. And then we've got people from all sorts of backgrounds, not just Jewish students, who are self-censoring, who are really scared to say what they think because they are worried about an attack from academics and, and their fellow students. It's, it's not a healthy culture we've built in, in academia. Not at all. And that the universities have rolled over to a small um, minority with a very specific activist agenda is a, is a terrible precedent that mm. has been set. 
Um, universities are supposed to be places of the big contest of ideas and the freedom of speech to, you know, position, to take your position on a point and argue it out, uh, and that's not happening at all. The, on that first day of those protests at uh, Melbourne University, 6,000 students were declined the, the opportunity to go to their own classrooms so and learn, you know, enjoy the subjects that they're paying yeah. to, to study. Uh, and the, the universities are capitulating to this is, is a terrible problem. Oh, I do worry about the learning outcomes because we've already gone through the COVID era where we had so much remote learning and now some people are opting for remote because the campuses have got encampments happening and all sorts of protest and hostility. And uh, the, the the university heads don't seem to be too concerned. They they are more concerned about the overseas numbers coming in, which uh, prop up the balance sheet. Uh, Colleen Harkin, we could talk about this all day. Thank you so much for your time this evening. Really Anytime. do appreciate it.